Hey there lads and ladies, it is Petrifying Pumpkins here and welcome to another episode of PSVR News. Before we get started, if you like what you see here, why not consider, you know, hitting that old subscribe button and joining the pumpkin patch. We like to get moist here. With that shilling out of the way, let's just hop right into the news, starting with population one. So this article comes from uploadvr.com and it's written by David Jagno. Basically, if you don't know what population one is, it is a pretty hyped up game over on the Oculus Quest, I think it's on what Oculus Rift, other PC viewer headsets too, and of course us poor PlayStation virtual reality people left out in the shadows. I haven't really been paying attention to it much because it's not coming to PS VR, but now with this news that developers are definitely haven't they got plans to bring this game to PlayStation VR, and why not? Because if it can run on the Quest, why can't it run on PlayStation VR? PlayStation is more powerful than the standalone Quest, at least Quest One anyway. So it makes perfect sense that it will come to us and I'm delighted to hear that it is coming to us. So now that we know that, now that it's coming to my platform, I'm gonna start looking at this because I wasn't paying attention to it really much at all. I knew it was a battle royale. I knew it has some cool things, like you can do a lot of climbing in it, like parkour. It's got some Fortnite elements. I believe you can construct structures, I guess, basically. You can climb those, you can jump off those, you can kind of paraglide or glide or something while you're in the air and shoot. So it's very kind of, it's very action packed. It's very, you know, there's a lot, you need to be agile in that game. There's a lot of movement. There is a lot of stuff going on. And basically, I guess we could just play this video here to get an idea of what the gameplay is like if I just muse it. This is from Upload Viewer, of course, once again. And uh, yeah, so when you're on skyscrapers, you're doing a lot of parkour, you're jumping all over the place. Uh, it looks really cool, actually. I doubt it's the full 100 that you might expect from Battle Royales like Fortnite or Call of Duty or whatever. Uh, but this gives you an idea of what it is. Kind of, it's semi-realistic, I would say. It's definitely more of a realistic look to it than Fortnite. And if you've played a Battle Royale, I think you know the basics of what's going on here. You land, you lose. You survive. You've got one life. Be the last man left standing. Big Box VR. These are the developers of this game. So they're not stopping with the Oculus Quest uh, or the PC VR headsets. They have plans to release on PlayStation VR. So in a recent interview with Population One with the company CEO Chia Chen Li and CTO Gabe Brown. Okay, so Brown confirms on PC we had 24 players and on Quest now we have 18 currently. A lot of that had to do with rewriting a, rewriting a big chunk of Unity. The physics engine, physics was too slow. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, so, definitely don't expect the 100 players. During the interview, following the description about inclusivity for devices with Population 1, I asked about the potential for PS viewer version. Good man, David Jagno. Fortunately, it sounds like that's already part of the plan. So definitely, says Lee, we want to be on every platform but we have to first nail the Quest platform, then PC VR, and then we definitely have plans for PS VR. So on the bottom here it says, it's coming to Quest October 22nd for Quest PC. So once that's all, like they said, nailed, once they've got all that ironed out, once it's run smooth on those platforms, then they're gonna turn their attention to us. Now it sounds like by the time that happens, the PS5 will be probably out for months and months. So there is the potential here for this not running on PS4 and maybe only being PS5. Now I'm not sure. I don't think so because if it's running on the Quest, they can probably make it run on the PS4. But if they wanted to get this game looking at its best, they could do a PS5 version 2 or at least an update to support the PS5. Hopefully that's something that we will see. And I am pretty excited about this because pretty much the only Battle Royale that you can have on PSVR right now is Rec Royale. So that's kind of like a mini game within Rec Room. And I don't know if you played Rec Room recently. It seems to be very hard to get a game. Last time we tried anyway, we just couldn't. You needed like 14 players minimum. We couldn't get that. The players that we did get were like a bunch of kids screaming, shouting, all that usual shice that you can expect from Rec Room these days, I guess. Which is fine because Rec Room is targeted towards kids. So I'm not going to give them grief for that. But if I want something a bit more mature, a bit more my speed, you know, Population 1 looks like it's the answer. Right now, it's got no competition. So unless Warzone comes out next year and says, hey, now that PS5 is here, we're going to be putting Warzone on PlayStation VR, then this game is probably going to do well on PS VR headsets. But while we're talking about Population 1 and while we're sticking with Upload VR, let's talk about a bit of controversy 
surrounding this game. So you may have seen a lot of either content creators on YouTube or Twitch streamers or, or you know, even journalists like Upload VR. They've already got their hands on this game. It was in beta for a long time. They've already previewed it and maybe even reviewed it. And you know, again, like I said, not been paying attention because it hasn't been on PSVR, but now it is coming. So now I'm paying attention. But all these reviews, previews, whatever you want to call them, seem to be positive so a lot of people seem very happy about this game coming out later this month of course so there's a bit of excitement building up around this but then something happened yesterday that was kind of kind of tempered expectations a little bit maybe gave some people reason to pause and maybe you know be a little concerned about what the studio is doing with this game because they're talking now about microtransactions so on the one hand as you can see in the heading here from this article by Harry Baker on UploadViewer.com, these microtransactions, they're not coming at launch and they're cosmetic only. So that sounds fine. Firewall does that too. Cosmetic DLC is the only paid DLC that you need to worry about. Problem with this and the controversy with this is that these developers put these preview codes out, gathered to all these people, all these reviewers and whatnot, and never once mentioned that it was going to have microtransactions. So this is the $30 game. People played this, reviewed this with that in mind. They advised people to buy it with that in mind that there wasn't microtransactions. Now all of a sudden, oh, by the way, microtransactions are coming. So that feels a little bit shady. I know some people not too happy with, it feels a little bit underhanded. Now, again, it's just cosmetic. It's fine. Nothing's gonna be paid to win. If you can listen to the developer's words, it's just gun skins, character skins, stuff like that. But it's just the fact that people have already advised, you know, their followers, uh, you know, big guys even. Like Nate, they've said, hey, this game's great, blah, blah, blah. A lot of kids might be watching that, you know, but teens are impressionable youths or whatnot. And maybe people who shouldn't be getting their hands on games with microtransactions. And they're going to buy this and all of a sudden there's going to be microtransactions. A little bit shady. Doesn't really bother me too much. But I just don't like the way that they handle that. So in response to kind of this controversy, Population One, their official Twitter account, came out with this tweet. So they said, we're seeing some confusion about Pop One's in-game store and microtransactions. We've put together some quick answers for you. So the question is, it's a bit of a QA and a they've met. Are microtransactions pay to win? No, our microtransactions are not loot boxes, so there's no random number generator, and do not give the player any advantage in the game other than looking very stylish. Uh, next question is what microtransactions are planned? Currently the only microtransactions we have planned are character, skins, and gun skins. We will not be charging you for guns, maps, or other functionality that will separate the player base. So that's a good answer, I'm happy to see that. Next question is, if it has microtransactions, it should be free to play. Why isn't it free to play? So first of all, I'm not sure I agree with that even, uh, that just because you buy it, it should not have microtransactions. And I guess we'll get into that too a little bit with the next story. But uh, a lot of viewer games are cheap, and especially these online games. So let's take Firewall, for example, because we know Firewall so very well on this channel. That was a $40 game, 40 euro game they released. But of course they kept supporting that game after launch. These things cost money, wages need to be paid, got to keep the lights on at First Contact Entertainment's studios, you know, so while they're pumping out all these free maps, free guns, free contractors, I don't think it's too much to ask for them to be compensated for that extra bit of work, you know? Now, Firewall took the approach of like season pass, battle pass type of approach. Uh, with the operation passes and the answer they give here is we wish it could be free to play But we need to be able to support the cost of ongoing development Servers coders artists, etc. As the VR community grows We will continue to consider the possibility of free to play in the future So basically it's just not viable for this to be free to play and be continuously supported So the next question is why is the store hidden which of course leads me to speculate that there is an option for the store That's just not available yet that will appear when it's ready. So our store isn't finished and won't be in the initial release. The store will be coming with our first in-game event. All events will be free and give all players the chance of earning multiple free skins. And then the last question, what do I get with the $30 redo price tag? You get access to the entire game, which includes online play, combat trial bot mode, character and gun skin progression system, daily challenges, in-game events, and map updates over time. So I guess the big problem, again, to just reiterate, is that that store was missing, hidden. So some people think 
The reason the store is missing, they were being shady. They wanted to hide that, but it turns out if you can heed them, they're saying, listen, we're not trying to hide us. It's just that it's not ready yet. And when it is there, you're not going to be buying any pay to win stuff. It's just cosmetic stuff. Still would have been nice if they made that clear from the get go. Could have avoided all of this. I don't think anyone would have been too mad at the idea of cosmetic paid cosmetics because they're not play to win or pay to win, I should say. Sorry. And that's really all we got to talk about for Population One right now. I'm pretty excited for this one. I still think it's probably going to be 2021, um, maybe mid if we're lucky, but I feel like probably late 2021. The way they've been wording, you know, when the support is going to be. PS Viewer is going to be last on their list. It's PC Quest. Then we get it. But I'm still excited. I'm especially excited for the potential of what the PS5 could bring to a game like this. Could it up the player count? If that's something that they wanted to do even. Maybe we'll even see aim support and stuff like that. That'd be really cool. Still lots of questions about how it would work on PS Viewer in terms of control schemes. You know, will it have crossplay? I think it has crossplay on the Quest and PC and all that. Anyway, let's move on to the next story, which is E. A having no plans for Star Wars Squadrons DLC. So this is from David Jagno once again at uploadvr.com. This site's very handy for your PlayStation VR news. It's all just in one place, really easy to get to. So I recommend this website if you haven't checked it out yet. So this is kind of ironic considering EA have this reputation of releasing a game, usually in an unfinished stage, and then nickel and diamond and loot boxing and DLC and, and microtransaction the shit out of their games. And now that they're not doing it with squadrons, everyone's like, you know what, maybe you should do it with squadrons, you know? And I'm on that boat too. I'd happily, I'd pay for DLC for like more maps or, you know, maybe, well, I wouldn't like to pay for maps because that splits up the player base, uh, but I'd like the option to pay for, you know, something that would help continue development of the game that would allow uh, free maps to come, you know? I'd, I'd consider buying cosmetic stuff like that, you know, just to support the game. Or if they did like a season pass type approach or like firewall style operation pass, something like that, I'd be on board with because this game is so, so good that it seems like a shame that there's just like release and forget for them kind of. And it's, like it's shocking. It's like really surprising that EA are allowing this. I mean, this is completely out of character for EA, you know? So David Jagno says Star Wars Squadrons is here and it's pretty great. Been having a blast playing as in VR with hot ass setup since EA chose not to support VR motion controllers. During an interview last week, we also spoke about future plans for the game and whether it could ever come to the Oculus Quest. Now, of course, we don't care if it comes to the Quest, but we do care about the future plans for the game. So, Star Wars post launch support. One major point in favor of Star Wars Squadrons is the hearts of gamers. In the hearts of gamers, that would make more sense is that EA has promised to never have any microtransactions at all, which is great to hear after the loot box fiasco of Battlefront 2. Battlefront 2, of course, probably the most famous example of just chronic loot boxes, like it was obscene. I didn't even play it, but you just heard so much about it, like it was just a shit show with Battlefront 2, and I'm sure that influenced their decision for squadrons. You know, get that good will, get some good PR. But what does that mean for the game's future support post-launch with new game modes, DLC, and so on? Well, as it stands, there are no plans for any of that stuff. As it stands, okay, so maybe there's hope with this these three words right here that could change. So, in quotation mark, Ian Fraser, creative director on Star Wars Squadrons. Anyway, so he says, never say never, so to speak. But as far as their philosophy goes, we're not trying to treat the game as a live service. We don't want to say it's almost done and then dribble out more over time which to be honest is how most games work these days. So we've tried to treat this in kind of an old school approach saying, you've paid the $40, this is the game, and it's entirely self-contained. We're not planning to add more content, this is the game, and we hope you understand the value proposition. So on the one hand, that's admirable, I think. You know, you get what you paid for. It's $40, it wasn't even a full price game. The game is self-excellent quality. Maps are mostly excellent. There's a couple of maps that are maybe a little bit, you know. The ships are fantastic. If you're a Star Wars fan, there's like so much here to love. And I'm not a Star Wars fan, and there is still so much to love about this game. Just the pure gameplay aspect of it is just top notch. With that being said, because the game is so goddamn good, it is sad that they're not planning to add more stuff because you want more of this game. Of course, that just maybe will increase demand for sequels, Star Wars Squadrons 2, rather than just more DLC 
to extend the life of this game, which isn't bad either. Maybe that's the approach they'll go with us, hopefully, because I want more squadrons. Finally, David Jagno asks about the quest version, no plans at this time, but we don't care too much about that. You know, uh, if you bought a quest instead of a PS Viewer, that's your fault. That is your fault. And you deserve everything bad that happens to you. Obviously, just joking, Quest is a fantastic piece of kit, especially the Quest 2 now as well. Uh, but this is kind of just, I don't know. I don't know what to think about it. Like, I'm a little bit sad about it, but at the same time, uh, you've got to respect the decision. Now, that is if it's their decision. Maybe EA are like, this is your budget, we're not spending any more on this little dogfighting game that you want to make for virtual reality. We're not investing in that too much. But, fingers crossed, this game has sold well. I suspect it has. I haven't seen any figures yet. And maybe that will warrant them taking another look at this kind of philosophy. Maybe they'll say, well, a lot of players hungry for content. And if they don't do that and add more content, they could always say, okay, let's start working on the sequel. Another $40 sequel, this time on PS5. Enhanced graphics, all that kind of stuff. That would be fantastic too. All right, let me move on to the last topic which is pretty short, but it is all about dreams. So they called it the music update. It is 2.18. So let's go over what's new. So basically, obviously, it's called music updates. So you can probably guess this is all about the music creation in the game. But there is more to it than that. Uh, so they added like, a bunch of instruments, orchestra sound and instruments. It sounds really impressive, stringed instruments, all that kind of stuff. So if you're someone who likes to mess around with the music, you'll be happy with this. Drum kits, keyboards, guitars, percussion synths, stringed instruments, wind and brass, sampled phrases and effects, new vocals, and some legacy instruments are now in more. Okay, I don't, that's not a big one, but the rest are big. And they've also got new music clips, so clips are an easy, fun way to make music in dreams, as simple as stamping on a timeline, and we've made it better, adding a whole load of new music clips spanning multiple genres. There's more variety than ever before, it's all designed to work together, and it's carefully organized to help structure your track. So it seems like music clips might be pre-made little dizzies. Is it dizzy the correct way to say it? So you don't have to like create them from scratch yourself. It speeds up the process if you're not too interested in spending hours learning the music creation aspect of this game. So new music tracks as well. So they've added this new function to the uh, sensor, the controller sensor, that will allow you to assign certain things to the buttons on the, uh, let's say the move controllers or whatever. Uh, so they've adjusted viewer subtitle positioning. So a new option in my preferences to adjust the position of subtitles when in viewer. Nice to see. Disable comfort mode, so creators will now have the option to temporarily turn off a player's comfort mode setting if their creation is not compatible. Players will receive notices of this before continuing. It's always nice to have more options, especially when it comes to comfort mode settings and all that kind of stuff. And this is the big one here, and this is the one that's got me excited. So basic aim controller support. Aim controllers will now function when connected, interpreted as a wireless controller. Now, I'm not too sure what they mean when they say basic aim controller support rather than just aim controller support but i've already seen some people make little kind of uh, demos of like guns shooting objects with the aim controller looks really cool i'm sure it feels way better than using the move controllers and plus you got the sticks on us as well so i'm really excited to see what people make in dreams with the aim controller in mind uh, they've also added some more labeling for viewer creations so it makes it easier to see if this viewer compatible or flat or what and so while this whole update is focused on the music, for me, this should have called this the aim controller update, you know, because that is the coolest thing and I have no idea what's coming. Uh, they're always updating this game, of course, but they never really hinted that, I mean, they said in the past they'd look into it, but uh, they never hinted that it was so close to completion. Uh, so that's really exciting. And I'm really happy to see that. And so that is it for this episode of PS VR News. Before I go, let me give a special thank you to my Patreon supporters whose names are on the screen as I speak. Thanks to their generosity, they can help keep this channel moist. In particular, let me give a huge shout out to the top tier Patreon supporters. Tradition, Chop517, Daniel the Pumpkin Patch Kid, Crum and Pete Hawkins. Thank you very much for that generosity. If you would like to join the Patreon, the link will be in the description below, but if not, I will be equally thrilled with the likes, the subscribes, the comments, all that usual YouTube and shies. Finally, let me give a massive thank you to Decepticon for letting me use his music in all my videos. You can check him out over on Decepticon.com. The link for that will be in the description too. And finally, I will end the video there. Thank you very much for watching. Stay moist.